Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we're going to study square rules in simple equations. My first equation is this one, x squared equals 81. And you probably can see the solution, it's going to be 9, right? Because 9 squared equals 81. But since square roots and squaring are the opposite operations, then I can also write an intermediate step here, that x equals square root of 81. And then that, of course, is 9. Square root of 81 is 9 because square root here means that you need to think about the number multiplied by itself gives you 81. 9 is such number. So here, when the answer is not so obvious, you know, what number squared equals 170? For example, 13 times 13 would be 169, real close. So this must be 13.05 maybe. But to find the exact answer, I will write that x equals, and I take the opposite operation, square root of 170. And then I take a calculator and calculate this using the calculator, and we will get approximately, you need to round this now, 13.04, so I had a good guess. Over here, before we, before we worry about the square roots, we want to make this equation to be of this form, where x squared is alone on one side. So, our first step will be to do something to this minus 1. And of course we do the same usual thing, we add 1 to both sides. I'm going to mark it here in my marginal notes, add 1 to both sides. And then this disappears and we have x squared alone, and over here we get 15 plus 1, that is 16. Now again, it is pretty easy, you can see x equals 4, right? x equals square root of 16, x equals 4. Now, one little point. There actually is another solution to this equation here, x squared equals 16, because also negative 4 would work, because negative 4 times negative 4 would be 16 too. So actually there are two solutions. So similarly here x equals negative 9 and x equals negative 13.04 are also solutions. Over here, again we need to first do something to this plus 15. So I will subtract 15 from both sides. And then that leaves a squared here and over here, subtract 15, so I get 100. And now, I take square root of 100, or I think what number squared is 100. So a equals 10, or a, a equals negative 10. Over here, the same thing happens. We need to first have y squared alone on this side. So, I will subtract this much. But before I do that, I can simplify this. So let me first simplify y squared plus 9 equals 25. Now I subtract 9 from both sides, so, now, so y squared is now alone. And then 25 minus 9 would be 16. And now you can see the solution, right? y equals 4, or there's the other negative solution too. Here it looks a little bit more complicated, but it really isn't. I can first simplify these if I want to. Or I can leave them as they are and then just use my calculator in the end to calculate the whole thing. So if I do that, I will add this to both sides. So then I will get b squared on this side, right? And this side I will have 37 squared and then this added to it. Like that. The reason I'm not simplifying these is because I'm just going to put them into the calculator. It really, I don't really need to know what this number is or what this number squared is, right? And now it is of the form b squared equals some number. And so now I take the square root. I can write it like this, b equals square root of this whole thing. And then you use your calculator, you first calculate what is under the square root, and then you take the square root of that number. And we will get b equals square root of 1945, which is approximately 
44.10 or B could be negative 44.10 2x squared equals 50 in this equation the principle is the same I need to have x squared alone on this side so I divide both sides by 2 and I get x squared equals 25 and then x equals 5 or the negative solution x equals negative 5 now here there's again one extra step here first I will get rid of this negative 1 here I will add 1 to both sides use my marginal notes add 1 to both sides 4y squared equals 129 next divide by 4 so now I have y squared alone and this is 129 divided by 4 on that side lastly take square root y equals square root of that thingy 129 divided by 4 and we will get y equals approximately 5.68 and also y could be negative 5.68 now here's a typical application or problem where this kind of thing can be useful. Draw a square whose area is equal to the areas of these two squares. In other words, draw a square here so that its area is the sum of these two areas. Well, to start I might want to calculate the area of this square. It would be 121 square centimeters. And this one would be 19 times 19 which is 361 square centimeters. So the area of my square has to be this plus that, right? The area of my square has to be 482 square centimeters. And so, now what? And before we go any further, some students might guess that the square we're supposed to draw, draw will have a side length of 11 plus 19, you know, or 30 centimeters, 30 times 30. But you can see that would be wrong because 30 times 30, the area would be 900 square centimeters. And we have already found out that the area has to be 482 square centimeters. And this ties in with square roots, right? Now that you know the area of the square, to find the side length, you take the square root of that number. The side will be square root of 482, that many centimeters. Calculator again helps, and this is about 21.95 centimeters, which for my practical purposes will be 22 centimeters. My big ruler doesn't even have... I cannot draw it any more accurately. So here's a ruler, and I'll measure 22 centimeters for the side. Okay, does it look right? Does it look reasonable? You want to check that with your problems always. Yes, it does, because when you look at this and this together, yeah, the area would be like that. So we're all done with these problems, and I hope it was helpful.